Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you back on the channel. I'm Nilesh and in this video we are going to start talking about unsupervised learning. Up till this point in this series we looked at supervised learning methods and also semi-supervised learning methods. Now we'll completely switch over to supervised unsupervised learning methods where uh, we'll see the differences, what the differences are between unsupervised and supervised. Basically in unsupervised we do not have the targets uh, when we are trying to train a model. And the very first topic in supervised learning uh, that we'll look at is Gaussian mixture models. So this uh, particular topic, I tried to divide it into four different parts as listed here. And to make this video uh, shorter I'm going to divide um, this into maybe three or four parts depending on how long it gets so let's get started with part one so and before we do that here are two main references that I'd like to suggest uh, one is the book uh, pattern recognition and machine learning by Christopher Bishop uh, uh, it says uh, chapters 3, 9, and 10. Uh, and then there is an online lecture on Bayesian non-parametric exchangeability uh, by uh, Tamara Broderick. And that's on YouTube. So this is the link. So you definitely want to check both of these if you need additional information or clarification. And in the first part, we look at what are the differences between supervised and unsupervised learning and what is Gaussian distribution. So uh, here is an example. On the left hand side, we have a data set which has two features, uh, which is engine horsepower and mileage in miles per gallon. And the target here is uh, categorical and we have uh, target that tells if each of those vehicles if it's uh, if it has high fuel efficiency medium fuel efficiency or low fuel efficiency and for example the first uh, uh, vehicle in that is represented here in the first row it has high fuel efficiency second one has medium last third one has low now we have seen that when we train with supervised learning methods, we input both the features as well as targets. So this is represented as X train and this is our Y train that we input to the fit method when performing the fit. And then test method also has, uh, sorry, the test data also has both the um, mean uh, sorry, it also has the features and the target. So we use that target to get the final scores uh, to see how the model fits with the unseen data. Now, in case of unsupervised learning, we do not have the target. So the data would simply be engine horsepower and miles per gallon. So the task that uh, we are going to look at in this video uh, pertains to uh, finding groups. So if we try to plot this data on uh, on say two dimensional plot with um, maybe engine horsepower on x axis, miles per gallon on the y axis, then we may able to f we may be able to see three different groups of points clustered together. And so unsupervised learning method can help us identify those groups of point, groups of data points, and then we can label them as uh, high, medium, or low, or any other labels. So here we can see that uh, the orange, green, and blue are the three groups that are already labeled uh, uh, in the data set when we uh, are when we you want to use them for the training purposes however in case of unsupervised learning the data is not labeled uh, how, uh, however we do see these clusters and so uh, we uh, use 
the distances from these data points to see which points belong to which clusters and we'll look at uh, how that is done in more in depth in future slides so with supervised we uh, we have the targets so we know the groups there in unsupervised we uh, we call them clusters of data points and we can identify cluster one cluster two cluster three as shown here and then those are labeled for us uh, if we want to do further processing the clusters or groups can be of different structures uh, here we have two well separated groups and they look like looks like they are and have kind of similar density of data points so the spacing between the data points is more or less same in both the clusters in this cluster they are well separated but then the density or distance between the data points within uh, each of those clusters is different uh, these are more compact these are uh, spread out now this is another version in which we can see that the smaller cluster is within the outer uh, group which is more spread out so that's another uh, type of uh, data we can help find the clusters using unsupervised learning methods and these are two overlapping dense clusters and then we have this cluster uh, which is uh, interesting and complicated but as we'll see gaussian method mixture models can help us uh, find these two clusters uh, based on the probability values of each of these data points uh, and how they belong to that particular cluster here is another uh, set of structure of data where we have these origin is this fashion so that's uh, and these are just some few examples uh, there are i will say maybe as many uh, structures you could find as many there are data sets so this is uh, just to give you an intuition of what type of structures uh, we we can find in data sets when we are performing unsupervised learning to find clusters so why then is unsupervised learning used so uh, first is as we looked earlier it help it can help us find understand the structure of data uh, it is also used to impute missing values so let's say for example if we have a, a cluster of data points in which we have values for five out of ten features uh, but we know that uh, that particular data point belongs to that particular cluster uh, then we could assign uh, values within that cluster to that data point which has missing values so out of five we can add maybe other remaining uh, five values for the features to that data point feature engineering is, is another application so let's say you have uh, data on customers uh, who shop in a grocery store and depending on their uh, monthly sp uh, spending on groceries in that store we can segment them uh, uh, based on high spender low spender medium spender and accordingly the marketing team could uh, use that information to provide maybe discount coupons or new products to each of these customers so segmentation market segmentation could be uh, one of the uses of uh, this feature engineering now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about gaussian distribution so you 
probably seen this curve several times um, uh, if you have not this is a quick refresher on that uh, let's say we look at our data set of miles per gallon uh, mileage we can plot it in this form where we have a gaussian curve in real world uh, the miles per gallon may not look like this but uh, for sake of this uh, video let's assume that the distribution looks like this and we have normalized values on the x-axis which is uh, the miles per gallon and the zero indicates the mean so the center in this case is mean uh, because this is a well-balanced symmetric uh, curve which is the normal distribution and on the y-axis we have the probability density and the reason why uh, we are discussing this plot is because the entire discussion on Gaussian mixture models depends on understanding this particular plot right here. We'll be talking about these probabilities that the densities that are on the y-axis and uh, the mean and the spread of these uh, uh, curves, the spread, I mean the standard deviation so if you are a one standard deviation away from the mean this is the region if you are two standard deviations on the positive side this would be the distance three standard deviations is up to here and similarly we have the same one two and three standard deviation on the negative side of the mean so we would use these the mean the variation uh, for each of the features or each of the data points to find out how close or far they are from um, either the center of the cluster or uh, the or mostly from the center of the cluster and so that help would help us uh, make a decision whether that point should belong to a specific cluster or it should belong to a different cluster and this is for just a single variable we are looking at now if we have two or more variables uh, that would be multivariate so for two variables you'd say it's a bivariate and here we have two features now engine horsepower and miles per gallon and let's say the two curves look like this uh, they are gaussian and when we try to plot them we see a 3d plot as shown here we have engine horsepower miles per gallon on the xy axis on the z axis we have the probability density now how do we read this plot so uh, this is the method and you'll see uh, these types of plots in several times now in this video and so it's important to know how to read these if you already know how to read them you could skip this part uh, basically what we have is in this particular uh, surface plot these rings represent uh, let's say the levels or height of the data points from the floor of this plot so the bottom most ring is at 0 0.1 height from the floor so that's the 0 0.1 probability density then the next one is 0.2 then 0.3 and as we go up to the top uh, that would be the maximum value and we can represent instead of uh, looking at a 3d plot it's easier sometimes to look at 2d representation of this 3d plot which is shown on the right hand side and the name for this type of plot is contour plots and in this plot we have the same ring so point one is the larger ring because it's at the towards the bottom of that uh, surface plot and uh, we have 0 0.3 that's in the center that represents, represents the higher value for the probability density so this is like a mountain and think of it as a mount looking at a mountain from the top and on the points on this ring would have the same value so the outermost ring anywhere on that ring would have the value of 0 
and so on for the other data points in other rings and here as we'll see the shape of these contour plots also make a huge difference so if the plots are oval in shape as shown in the left hand side it tells us that there is some interaction going on between the two features here engine horsepower and miles per gallon maybe if the uh, the curve actually if you think about it practically it doesn't make sense because as the engine horsepower increases the miles per gallon should drop so maybe though i should have drawn the oval this way but anyways uh, there uh, the oval shape does indicate that uh, there is some interaction so the features could be correlated to a certain degree uh, however on the right hand side we can see that the contours are circular it's a perfect circle uh, which suggests that there is no interaction between the features uh, engine and the mileage and so the features could be considered as independent now in mathematical terms a notation for each of these would be as shown here on the right hand side we have this capital sigma uh, which represents the covariance and here we have the covariance matrix denoted by uh, these uh, two by two matrix and here we have sigma square x that's the variance for the feature on the x-axis so that's the miles per gallon mileage then we have the variance uh, sigma square y so that's for the y-axis and that's the engine horsepower and as we earlier looked at what standard deviation is so standard deviation is square root of variance so this sigma by itself represents standard deviation which uh, which tells us the spread of that gaussian or spread of the distribution of that data point to note here is that the off diagonal elements of these this matrix are zero uh, which uh, indicates that there is no interaction between the features and that's the reason why this particular contours are circular uh, which is because the variances are equal so on the right hand side on the left hand side we have uh, this plot where the off diagonal elements are not zero and we see the interaction is there so the covariance here is uh, sigma x and sigma y which is shown here and then we have the variances which is uh, the same sigma square x and sigma square y let's continue part two in next video until then please like share and subscribe thank you